Hi, fifth graders. We're here for the last and final chapter of One Crazy Summer, chapter 33. But before we do that, let's just do our recap of chapter 32, as we always do. So here's what we know from so far, from chapter 32. Um, when they returned home that final evening, instead of like, you know, being happy that they fixed her kitchen, Cecile instead was angry at Delphine for not doing what she perceived to be the right thing when she was arrested. She had wanted to, Delphine to call Pa. She wasn't sure why um, Cecile, Delphine didn't do that. Another thing is um, that, we, that we know from the last chapter, Delphine has had enough and has had this outburst here at this last um, scene. It was a turning point for her where she like finally spoke up. She talked back to her mom in full and she accused her mom of leaving them, forcing her to take on the role of the mother. Um, Cecile also didn't excuse herself necessarily, but she does give, this is a moment here in chapter 32 where she gives a lot of details about how and why she left. And she reminds Delphine that she's still a girl, that she wants her to live in the moment. She doesn't want her to have to try to be the mother anymore. She said to her, be 11, which really meant a lot to Delphine. And then the last thing we learned, in, or one of the other things we learned in the chapter 32 was that we learned what Fern's real name was, Afua. Um, and she talks a little bit about it, but she stopped short of giving all of the backstory as far as um, like, did she leave because of a name? Her, Big Ma had alluded to that earlier in the story, that that's the reason why Cecile left. Um, but she says to, to Delphine more or less, you know, that's a story for another day. That's, it's too much. I already gave you too much of my backstory that I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, all right, so let's think about our lens again. Remember, we're always as readers thinking about um, the change in the character, especially here at the end, any traits that Delphine and the other characters are exhibiting, but really more so at the end here, how are they changing? We're also thinking about the relationships that they continue to have and how those might be changing. We're thinking about the point of view of the narrator and we're also thinking as, especially here at the end of the story about the themes that we've seen develop across this, the text. Last chapter, chapter 33, Afua. Delphine, Vanetta, and Fern, get up out of that bed. Come on, y'all, it's time to go. No one wanted to get out of bed. No one wanted to go. But Cecile stood in the doorway and called us one more time. Fern was the first to spring up. Hey, that's my name. Our mother said my name. Cecile rolled her eyes and left the room. Fern was a regular jumping bean. She said my name. She said my name. Vanetta couldn't take an another excited minute of Fern jumping on the upper mattress. Big deal, she said my name too. Big deal to me, Fern said. She always says Delphine. She always says Vanetta. Today she said Fern, Fern, Fern. She jumped in between each Fern, Fern, not a little girl. Wow, she's really feeling excited here because that's the first time that her mother mentioned her by her name. Could you imagine not being called by your name by your own mother until the very last day that you're visiting her for a month? It must have been really special for Fern. Vanetta flung her pillow at Fern, but Fern couldn't be quieted. I said, that's not your real name, the one she gave you. Whew, let's pause there a second. Wow, normally Delphine would have kept quiet. She would have done whatever she could to help make sure that Fern felt, you know, happy. But she didn't do that here. Instead, she stirs the pot. She's usually always looking out for her sisters, but in this moment, she kind of like reverts back to like maybe what a sister would would do kind of like dig at her little sister a little bit there when she says that's not your real name the one she gave you it is too mm, let's see what happens is not we kept it up Fanette and i on the same side for a change is too then i broke it by saying your name is afua i wasn't known for joking so that sobered them up as much as fern's name which they both mouthed afua Take that back, Delphine, Fern said. My name's not Afua, it's Fern. Vanetta pointed at her. Aha, Afua, fooey, chop suey, little fooey, all over my shoey. Now that doesn't sound very nice. Fern turned red. This was the part where I was supposed to shut Vanetta up and take Fern's side, right? Like we were just talking about Fern, sorry, Delphine being the mother always, but here she's not. Listen, instead I said, get used to it. Your name is Afua, as in Delphine, Vanetta, and Afua. Fern balled her fingers into a fist and punched me in the stomach. Her hand was so little, and I didn't say ow to give her the satisfaction of knowing that she caused me pain. I just said, go brush your teeth, Afua.
definitely a, a turning point there for Delphine. She seems to be following her mother's advice maybe a little bit by not not playing the mother always, turning into the, the girl that she is, the sister that she is here by giving it back to her sister. Later, Cecile said, why'd you tell her that? If I wanted her to know her name, I would have told her. I wouldn't tell if Cecile was really annoyed. I couldn't tell if Cecile was really annoyed or if she was just fussing. I decided that she was fussing and that I couldn't go through with my life afraid of what my mother might do next. So I shrugged and I ate my cereal. Hmm. She's like, well, whatever. <laughs> um, so we can pause, I mean, we can pause there because I was thinking a little bit about the character in that moment, a little bit more developing onto what I just had had been thinking, she's definitely taking her mother's lesson to heart when she had said, be 11. She's not acting like the sister anymore. She said right here, this line, I decided that she was fussing that I couldn't go through my life afraid of what my mother might do next. So I just shrugged and ate my cereal. Delphine is definitely giving up some of this um, command that she's always had. And she's kind of like, mm, you know what? Like, maybe I'll just be a kid for a moment here. Um, Delphine, Veneta, Afua, and Nzilla. Some names made up, some names not. Let's pause there just for a moment because like we know, Afua's name is just a name that we just learned, but also Nzilla's name, we can take a moment here and pause to know what it means. Just like Afua meant born on a Friday, we learned in the last chapter, the name Nzilla is, an, is of African origin and it means path. So some of these names that these, these the, like, so Delphine and Veneta have their names, but Afua's name stands for something, and Nzilla's name stands for something. So in that way, they're kind of both special there. Did it matter what they really meant or where Cecile got them from as long as she gave them to us and to herself? We spent the bus ride and the $2 taxi ride to the airport making fun of Afua. Once Cecile said, cut it out, and that was the end of us teasing for an outright. Still, Vanetta and my constant smirks erupted into Snickers. Fern stayed mad. When we got to the airport, Cecile called Papa Collect. She turned her back to us and spoke to Pa for more than 15 minutes. Big Ma wouldn't be happy about the cost of the Collect call, but I doubted that Papa minded. While we were waiting for Cecile to finish speaking with Pa, a white man came by and said, how cute my sisters and I were in our matching outfits. He still had film left over from his sightseeing trip and wanted to use the last of it to take a picture of us. Pretty girls, smile pretty, he said. I could tell he was a nice man, but Cecile put a stop to it while Vanetta adjusted her hairband already posing for the cover of Jet. Cecile stood in front of us and said, they're not monkeys on display. The nice man tried to apologize, but Cecile wouldn't hear it. How would you like it if some strange man came snapping pictures of your daughters? I felt bad for him, but I knew Cecile had to step in. Any mother would have at least done that. So let's pause here. There's definitely another moment to, I'm, I'm really thinking about, you know, the character change in Cecile here. This is a moment to note. She's changing a bit as well, because if we think all the way back to that first scene in the airport where she went to come pick them up, barely talked to them, was walking, you know, five strides ahead of them as if they didn't even belong to her, to this scene in the airport here at the end of the, their stay with her, she's definitely come a long way as a mother here. She's went from not really even acknowledging them to standing up for them. And this is like something a true mother would do, protect them. Even Delphine notices this. She says any mother would have at least done that. So we've definitely come a long way in terms of the relationship between the sisters and Cecile. And it's definitely worth noting. Let's see how that might culminate here at the end in this very last chapter. We sat in a comfy waiting room seats without talking for almost half an hour. The hands on the big clock moved slowly. Fern nodded merrily like she was answering herself or singing, kind of like Cecile tapping out her beats with her pencil. Vanetta fiddled with her hairband or twirled her longest braid around her finger. I followed the janitor pushing his dry mop along the floor as people carrying travel bags danced around him or found seats. I stopped glancing up at the big clock or down at my Tonex. I didn't have to. The queasiness churning inside told me it was time to go. And then the boarding announcement was made over the loudspeaker. She said, go on. And we went. I expected Cecile to walk away. This is a really critical scene here. So let's really think deeply about this one part. Delphine expected Cecile to walk away, to cut through the terminal in her man-sized strides as soon as we got up and stood on line. When I turned to see if she had gone, she was standing only a few feet away, looking straight at me. 
It was a strange, wonderful feeling to discover eyes upon you when you expected no one to notice you at all. I smiled a little bit and faced front to find something to do with myself. We've been talking a little bit about, you know, it's, it's hard to be in a family and we've been talking about this strange relationship that the girls had with their mother. But this is one moment here where we seem to have a breakthrough. Delphine really feels like, at least for this one moment, that her mother's there for her. That's an amazing feeling. Lynette and Fern both held onto their own ticket. I reached to take Fern's ticket, afraid she'd crush it in a way she was holding it. She felt me reaching and pull her hand away. We moved closer to the front of the line near the ticket taker. Fern balled both hands, banging her fist to her sides, her ticket, now completely crumpled. Maybe she was afraid of the airplane ride and getting knocked around by those clouds. Maybe she didn't know what to do with her hands without Miss Patty Cake. Or she could have been mad about all that Afua teasing. My first move was to comfort her. So like Delphine's like, okay, I, I, I definitely have to still be at least like the older sister here. I went to reach out to Fern, but she bolted from the line, ran and jumped on top of Cecile. Vanetta and I didn't hesitate. We broke off from the line, ran over to hug our mother and let her hug us. How do you fly 3000 miles to meet the mother you hadn't seen since you needed her milk, needed to be picked up or were four going on five and not throw your arms around her, whether she wanted you to or not? Neither Vanetta, Fern, nor I could answer that one. We weren't about to leave Oakland without getting what we'd come for. It only took Fern to know we needed a hug from our mother. So let's finish here with one last thought. Um, as at this last scene, it's such a touching moment. I'm definitely thinking a lot about the themes that, I'm, uh, that we've seen expressed. Um, this was the very last chance that Delphine realizes what she was missing the whole time, a hug from her mother. From all that they've been through, this hug at the last moment symbolizes this connection between the daughters and Cecile. Um, I'm kind of thinking it symbolizes an element of forgiveness too. Like they're finally like allowing themselves to feel, even though that they're hurt by what Cecile's done, maybe on some level they understand it. We've talked a little bit about the theme before that, you know, it's difficult to belong to a family and that certainly has shown true. But in this last scene, it's almost like they're realizing, yeah, it's been difficult to be part of this family, but you know, we still can find love for one another. Another theme that comes across on some level is that theme that was playing out in the last chapter for Delphine to just be 11. It's almost like another lesson that can be learned here is you don't have to try to be something that you aren't yet. You don't have to be the mother. You don't have to always step in and do things like just because you feel like you have to. Sometimes you can just let it be. Just let it be to be 11, the age that you are or whatever age you are, if you're Vanetta or you're Fern, just be 11, be nine, be seven. So there's other themes too that could come across. So as we continue on here with our summary, that's sort of the last question that we wanna culminate here with, with, the, with the final scene. Um, but well, first let's summarize who was in this chapter and what new things do we learn about them? This is the last scene with the three girls and their mother. We learned that, you know, the walls finally broke down and they realized that they just needed to show some love between each other, both Cecile and the sisters. And they've, they've come to some, at least some kind of understanding there. What seems important? What are we learning about the problem? Definitely it was a problem uh, in this, this scene here where Delphine and Vanetta were kind of ganging up on Fern about her name. That was part of the problem. But it seems like Fern has this personality where she gets angry, but she also, like, remember she was the one that had the poem that um, revealed what had happened with um, Brother Kelvin. She's sort of like the brave one, the one that kind of has this little spark inside of her. She was the one that knew they needed to hug her, their mother. So it, I almost feel like, yeah, they're teasing Fern, but she probably seems like she'll be okay. She's the kind of kid that's going to get over things and know what, you know, when, when people really and truly love her. And how does this chapter connect to what we've read earlier? This scene, this chapter here and this scene culminates all the chapters leading up to it. It connects back to every, you know, every chapter that talks about the, their relationships with their mother, 
it definitely connects back to the chapter that we've just previously read where where Cecile reveals all the details about why she left. She gives the details about, you know, Fern's name being Athua. So this chapter connects, you know, to, honestly to all the previous chapters. It was the culmination here. And so the last question we have for you here, this is a released question that, you know, has been asked before of students. How do Fern's actions in this last scene develop a theme of the story? We ourselves went over a couple themes, but there's some plenty of themes that could be found besides the two that we talked about. Um, so yeah, for yourself, in your own mind, and in, in, in your own heart as a reader here, as we finish the story, what do Fern's actions in the last scene develop for you as a theme of the story? Use two details as always from the text to support your response. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed reading this text together and we can't wait to see you when we come back to school in just a couple weeks here. Bye boys and girls, thanks. Hope you enjoyed the text.